Hello fashion lovers and fashion students. I'm Sophie Kachmanian. Welcome back to my studio. I have been working on this dress, which is uh, without a skirt yet. And I was uh, describing how to connect the collar correctly to the neckline. And there is a video on my page if you are curious to learn uh, about that. Also a sleeve setup. So I kept my bodice unfinished because I wanted to do another demonstration of connecting the skirt correctly to the bodice. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. I would like to present my garment a little bit in detail to you so I understand what am I going to do and how am I going to do it. This dress is a Peter Pan color neckline dress with cap sleeves, lined cap sleeves. And as you can see, the, big, the, the opening is at the front. So I'm planning to put a zipper in here. This is an A-line skirt that I'm going to connect with this blouse. Well, as you can see, my front is left open for the zipper. I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit more, but my intention is to connect this skirt to the blouse correctly and finish up the zipper and actually finish the whole entire garment. As I said, first of all, I connected my back to my front with half an inch seam allowance, but before I connected them, I overlocked the edges. You can connect then overlock, that's possible too. And press it open. Here's my center front, pressed, and the zipper opening here, and my side seam. I don't have a center back seam. If your zipper is in your center back, you will be treating it just the same way. Because if you are planning to put zipper somewhere as your opening, you cannot do it without a seam allowance, without the seam in there. So no seam, no zipper. Okay, so my zipper is at the front and my opening is at the front. You might have a question how big my zipper opening is and how long the zipper is going to be for this particular garment. Here's what I do. I measured from the neckline, very edge of the neckline, to the waistline, half an inch up here because this half an inch at the waistline is my seam allowance that is going to be used when I connect this to my skirt. So I measured from this point to the half an inch up point, and I came up with, here's from the neckline to the waist, I measured 12 and a half. I wrote it down. And then for the skirt, the opening is going to be seven inches, measuring from the seam line down seven inches mark. Okay, so I measured half an inch up on the bodice that was 12 and a half and seven inches down from my seam line seven seven inches down then um, add them up 12 and a half plus seven is 19 and a half so I need a zipper that has this length so I can finish my garment by the way I have to tell you that if uh, for the skirt uh, zipper opening drop if you did six inches it will still work but um, you know, when the fabric is non-stretchable and your waistline is narrow, a person cannot wear the garment over the shoulders or over the hips. Therefore, this opening has to be big enough for a person to be able to wear it with a comfort. Obviously, for the production, they would be looking for 19 and a half inch long zipper, or if that zipper is not available, they will adjust their opening for the zipper length that is available. But since I am making just one garment, I'm going to adjust my zipper length to my garment length. I'm going to measure from the zipper stopper right here. Here's my zipper stopper. I'm going to measure from the zipper stopper down 19 and a half inches. And here I put a pin right at that length. So then I am going to cut uh, the remaining of the zipper, but this is how you do it. Let's say if my zipper is going to be 19 and a half inches long, I am going to measure that length. So my coil closed before I cut, of course. 
some people will stitch it with um, on the machine but the machine cr crushes the coil that's why I like to stitch it by hand a few times you go up and down and then you can go through the stitch and go through the loop secure it one more time so like that or another thing you can do you see this metallic stopper if you carefully can open up the teeth and bring it up and put it at this point that will be another way of doing it okay whatever the case is you choose um, to employ for this either stitch it or bring the zipper stopper up to this point then you go one inch beyond that point and cut the zipper off right there so this should have the zipper has to have one inch longer so it will hide underneath and you can stitch over it so my zipper is ready to be used so between my zipper length measuring my zipper preparing I exactly know how much this opening is going to be so I'm using seven inch opening right here and then the rest of my stitch is stitched closed now before I connect my skirt to the bodice and while my skirt is loose and I can easily manipulate it under my presser foot I went ahead and um, started finishing my hemline you need to decide which way do you want to finish it um, for instance I decided to press cord range up and then I'm going to be uh, pressing this one more time and I'm going to stitch it uh, like this and on the machine I could do like bias binding with that red fabric and I could put it on the edge I could employ a few different hand finishes but I am doing this one you see right now I am pressing one more time similar length and um, trying to do it as even as possible without stretching my hand this is a nice way of controlling the evenness of my hemline. So before stitching, my hemline is cooperating with me. Right now I'm getting ready to sew my hemline. Actually my intention is to stitch right at the edge, 16th of an inch from the fold of the hem hemline. Okay. I'm going to press my hemline before I start connecting it to the bodies because my skirt is still loose and it's very easy to press okay let's connect them okay I am here at the center back where I have a notch and I find my notch at the center back of my garment bodies as well and now I'm going to place those two center back notches on top of each other. If you don't have the notches, you can simply fold the back of your garment and find the middle point. That's what it is. And I'm going to start from the center back and pin notches to each other at a half an inch point because that's the point that they um, are actually matching with each other. And then from that point, I'm going to come to the side seam and put the side seams together. Well, as you can see from my side seam to, to the center back, my fabrics are agreeable with each other. In case you stitched your seam lines a little bit too deep or a little bit too um, shallow, most probably you would have not matching um, pieces. So if that's the case, you just adjust them before you go on with connecting. If you don't, then you will have pucker on the looser side. Okay, so after I secure those important points to each other, I'm going to put a couple more pins on the way with small pinches like that on the half an inch line. And from the side seam, I'm going to go to the center front. Okay, so 
but then I push my pieces to match the edges. As you notice, by the way, I didn't overlock my waistline yet because I'm waiting to connect my pieces to each other, then overlock. So they're matching. Let's go back to the center, center back again and do the same thing on the opposite side. Here the pieces are connected to each other and I'm going to sew it half an inch seam allowance. A little tip uh, for you to stitch your skirt successfully. Since I can't tell what kind of style you are sewing, let's say you have gathers or you have other details, pleats or darts on your way when you're going to sew, please sew from that side so you can adjust your gathers, pleats or darts, whatever. What am I trying to say is my inline skirt side is nice and flat. There is nothing that I can shift, I can twist or whatever. But on the body side, I have my darts and I don't want to shift them or should get them on the needle. So that's why I'm going to stitch from the body side. And I'm going to make sure that my seam allowances are stitched flat on my way. put your hand under the fabric and make sure that you're pushing all the extra fabrics that could be grabbed into your stitch that will cause um, you know difficulty that you have to open up the seam and stitch again so yeah before I can say that I'm done with my waistline seam and I can overlock and finish I am measuring my sides to each other. Since I have a waistline seam, there is a possibility that if I stitch my seam allowance slightly bigger or slightly smaller at the waistline, I will be having non-matching waistlines. As you can see, I stitched it actually like this so you can see how to fix it in case that happens and be aware of that. You see how this side is lumpier than the other side, which means I have to pinch a little bit from this side to make sure that those seams are matching with each other when I put my zipper on. So now one of the seam allowances visibly was bigger, I mean full half an inch seam allowance. The other one was slightly smaller as you can see clearly. I took a small eighth of an inch pinched in and I stitched and you can see that my waistlines are perfect right now and I'm ready to overlock and start setting up my zipper. Okay, so you can see my waistline seam allowances, both of them together, and I'm going to overlock them both of them together. If you don't have an overlock machine, definitely you can use your big zigzag stitch and kind of to, to edge the seam allowance so it doesn't fray. <laughs> While overlocking, you need, again, constantly keep your one of your hand, in this case, my right hand is always underneath, to make sure that I'm not grabbing any piece of fabric because my knife might cut it. Okay, first of all, I'm going to Press my seam allowance flat without stretching. You can press this on the, on, the, on the board also. And then my seam allowance is pressed, pushed towards the bodice. See, this is bodice. My seam allowance is pressed 
up like that. Before I start stitching my zipper on, I have to fix my waistline. Again, please do not uh, stretch the waist seam. Okay, so um, my uh, zipper opening is ready. I'm going to start setting up the zipper. So at this point, one very important thing that we need to clarify for ourselves is what kind of zipper it is that we are setting up. Most of the time, the confusion among my students is happening when they use the technique of sewing a regular centered zipper for the invisible zipper or vice versa. We need to understand that spe specific techniques that apply for the invisible zipper should be used for the invisible zipper. And for the regular zipper, let's say we can do centered zipper. That's what I'm going to do right now. Or railroad zipper, which has its own techniques. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate at this point for you. For the railroad zipper, I'm going to base stitch my half an inch seam allowance, which is a temporary stitch that I'm going to remove later. Uh, the number of that stitch can be number four or number five, whichever the biggest number on your machine and you are not doing um, any secure stitches at, neither at the beginning nor at the end of the seam so you can remove it easily. But before I apply my basting stitch to my uh, front zipper opening, I'm going to make sure that my waistline seams are matching. You see right here, I'm placing a pin right at the seam of the waistline so I make sure that when my zipper is finished, those lines are touching each other. And another very sensitive point can be my neckline at the very top where I want my zippers to stop, right here. Okay, so I make sure that those lines are matched up and pinned. The correctly done um, basting stitch is going to give you lots of um, assurance that your zipper is going to be successful. So I, after I pin it, now I'm going to baste stitch. Okay, please note that my facings are not stitched with my seam allowance. I'm letting them to be connected later on, after my zipper. After, after I stitch my half an inch seam allowance with my basting stitch, I am going to press my seams open. Obviously, you understand that it doesn't matter on which side the zipper is, the steps are the same. Okay, so I make sure that I put my coil, you see I can feel it, right under my seam. My coil is sitting right there and I am pinning from both sides of my dress. See, here's my coil. I just simply hold it in the place like that and I am going to pin from the opposite side and fix it in there. You can just, uh, you know, right now secure it in the place. Later on, you can adjust it and make it more secure so you can move your pins and fix them in a way that you want to. Keep on pinning. Again, the coil right under the seam the last pin is where my um, seven inch stop is I can put another pin right there so again the coil is right under the seam I can go back and double check and place couple more pins on the opposite direction 
so when I'm stitching my zipper doesn't shift stays where it is until I finish and finish until I stitch and finish the zipper so I'm going to start stitching from the top I go straight down go to my seven inch point stop pivot go to the other side and go all the way back secure stitch and finish and that is going to be done with your regular stitch length not the base stitch please closer to the to the end of the zipper start walking and then leave the needle inside lift up the presser foot pivot and pass over the other side of the seam again walk when you're quartering away from the seam and then again lift up the presser foot and pivot now we're stitching up to the top as you noticed I didn't change my presser foot into the zipper foot um, I kind of can keep my direction but if you need to I'm changing, you have to change your regular presser foot with the zipper foot, then stitch it. Okay, so we're done stitching the zipper. Now it's time for us to open the basting stitch inside of it. It will be a good idea to leave the ends sticking long so you can grab and open. In case you cannot catch it, you can use your seam ripper to open it like that. You just have to be careful not to cut the fabric. Or I can just simply pull out a couple of stitches, make a long end where I can grab it and I can cut this loose. Okay, so I opened up the seam. Now my zipper is in the place. There are a couple of different ways of stitching the zipper correctly in the place, but this was one of them. Um, now, what we need to do is, we need to finish the facings inside of the zipper. Look at the tips that are sticking up inside of it. You don't need to leave all this bulk inside of your facing so you can eliminate but not too much and then you are going to fold this right on top of it push this push the zipper twill tape inside and fold your facing over the over the twill tape like this and you can hand stitch it again the facing is folded and folded right on the zipper but a little bit away from the coil so it doesn't get trapped in there and then hand stitch it and connect it in place okay uh, this uh, measurement of this dress was matching my, my size so i am just wearing the dress right now um all you need to do uh, apply the final press to your garment cut all the hanging threads and you're ready uh, to go i hope you like my dress if you like just press like or share it with other people subscribe for my other videos because i'm going to be doing some more presentations in the near future and also look in, in my jasminejstudio.com where you can see draping tutorials in there and you can look at my pattern making tutorials also 
I'm Sophie Kachmanian. Until the next time.